something lethal. Dr. Manhattan, one of the most complex anti-heroes in the DC Universe capable of matter manipulation. This video is about an extremely popular and complex DC character. He is an anti-hero who largely isn't concerned with saving people or the world and instead takes on the role of a silent observer of all happenings in this universe and all others. Many fans seem to think that being a silent observer, he is doing a favor to all life in the universe because this being's godlike powers, when unleashed, can definitely prove to be terrible for all life in existence. The person I'm talking about is none other than DC's Dr. Manhattan. Being a big blue god with widespread presence across all realities and universes, practically omniscient, has made him a mysterious presence in the DC universe. His powers and abilities are insane, and honestly, he is the closest thing there is to a god in the DC universe. Keep watching for all things Dr. Manhattan. Before we go into our explanation, we have a very small request. If you like our content, please support us by subscribing to our channel. This is a small click for you, but for us, it means a lot. Thank you. Let's begin. It didn't kill Osterman. Did you really think it would... John Osterman and his transformation into Dr. Manhattan, the Watchmen comic lore explored. The limited graphic novel series called Watchmen is where the famous Dr. Manhattan debuted as a godlike being in the DC Universe. Author Alan Moore and illustrator Dave Gibbons collaborated to create the character. Dr. Manhattan is the series' leading example of how it addresses metaphysical concerns and questions. He is frequently cited as an illustration of a post-human god. The figure has received favorable feedback and he has appeared and been cited in a variety of media. Later, Dr. Manhattan made an appearance in the Before Watchmen comic book prequel, which featured a mini-series of just his individual issues. As far as his comic origins go, it is a tragic tale of horrible coincidences and bad decisions. Before Dr. Manhattan became the cosmic being we know and love, he was a regular human just like you and me. A German-American by descent, Jonathan Osterman was born in 1929 to a humble watchmaker. Little did his father know that the young Jonathan would go on to become one of the most powerful beings in all of existence. Jonathan loved and respected his father along with having a deep adoration for watches and clocks of all shapes and sizes. He was well poised to learn from his father and become a watchmaker just like him. But as he grew up, however, fate had other plans. John was just 16 years old and staying with his father in Brooklyn when the United States dropped the atomic bomb on Hiroshima. He was tinkering on his father's pocket watch, likely practicing for his future career, the morning of the incident in their kitchen. In light of the tragic bombing incident, which further led to discussions surrounding the theory of relativity and its indisputable truths and the advancements of military research, his father deemed his own profession to be obsolete and told young Jonathan to toss the clocks out of the windows in favor of a career in atomic physics, to be better than his father and to keep up with the times. My father was a watchmaker. He abandoned it when Einstein discovered that time is relative. The occurrence foreshadows Dr. Manhattan's external perspective of time as predestined and all things within it as so decided, including Dr. Manhattan's own reactions and feelings. It also marks the pivotal moment in John's plausible future. Being a dutiful son, Jonathan decided to listen to his father and left home to pursue physics on an academic level. He made it to a prestigious Ivy League university in America and hoped that he would one day be able to fulfill his father's dreams. If we have any Indian fans watching, they know all too well the consequences that come when parents force you into a career that you probably don't want. But even Jonathan's father could not have imagined the magnitude of the consequence his son would have to face as a result of him trying to fulfill his father's wish. He attended Princeton, much to the pride of his father, and interestingly, Osterman was lucky enough to attend an Albert Einstein lecture while a student at Princeton University between 1948 and 1958. With a number of students from New Jersey, he developed numerous friendships as he was a friendly and down-to-earth guy. Osterman decided to focus his dissertation as a PhD student on the neutrino theory of light that uses sea waves. 
When finished, he turned his doctoral dissertation to Dr. Michael Florence, the head of the physics department at Princeton University. Osterman learned from Florence that his dissertation was approved by the department on May 6, 1958. Following graduation, Osterman received a Doctor of Philosophy in Nuclear Physics. Dr. Milton Glass, who read his dissertation theses at Princeton, extended an invitation to him to go to the Gila Flats test base in New Mexico after he received his degree. Osterman was subsequently hired by Glass to work at Gila Flats as a project researcher to take over for the department Hank Meadows in the facility's weapons testing center, where experimental studies were being conducted regarding the intrinsic fields of physical objects, which, if interfered with, caused them to disintegrate. Here he met Janie Slater, a fellow researcher who would later become his love interest and became friends with a man called Wally Weaver. In July 1959, he traveled to New Jersey to visit his friends and Janie went with him to visit her mother. They spent time at the Palisades Amusement Park together. In the most romantic, comedy-esque fashion, a photographer approached them thinking they were a couple and took a souvenir photo of the two of them. All was going well until Janie's watch band snapped while they were out and about close to the shooting gallery, and the watch was further ruined when a fat man trod on it. They went back and spent the evening in John's hotel, because Janie was unable to connect with her mother and thus not able to meet her either. While together in the room, Jonathan assured Janie that he could fix the watch as they sat in bed inspecting the damaged timepiece. One thing led to another, and the two made love cementing their attraction and love for each other. As the saying goes, all good things eventually come to an end. And that is what happened to poor Janie and Jonathan once the accident occurred. Remember the broken watch and the promise Jonathan had made to Janie? Well, John had planned to present Janie the mended watch one month later on August 20th, 1959, just a few days after his 31st birthday, but found that he had left it in his lab coat, which he had left inside the intrinsic field experiment test chamber. The door closed and locked automatically as a safety measure while John was inside the test chamber getting the watch out of his coat. In preparation for the disintegration of test block 15, the chamber went into an automated countdown. Osterman's co-workers, with the exception of Janie who could not bear witness to his final moments and departed the room, were powerless to open the door or stop the countdown and were forced to watch in horror as John had his intrinsic field removed. He was ripped apart by the generator's force, quickly vaporized, and declared legally dead while bathed in the radiant light. He was given a funeral, and Janie placed their picture in the bestiary behind the glass, marking the end of his life and their relationship. However, things would not end like this. While the human Jonathan was definitely gone, in his place came Dr. Manhattan. In the months that followed, the research base experienced a number of unusual occurrences and apparitions, which led residents to believe the place was now haunted. However, this was not your run-of-the-mill case of haunting, and it soon became evident that John's mind had persisted an electromagnetic pattern, learned to manipulate the particles, and then use them to reconstitute himself as if he had simply put himself back together, much like how he and his father reassembled and repaired watches. A series of partial body reappearances, including those of the circulatory system, the nervous system including the brain and eyes, and a partially muscled skeleton served as indicators of this advancement. The appearances only lasted a short while each time, but were enough for people to realize what was happening in the facility. On November 22, 1959, in the Gila Flats cafeteria, John completely returned. There was a whistling sound, silverware was gleaming, and he emerged as a towering, nude, blue-skinned person in an ultraviolet light that gave those in attendance sunburns. So this was definitely not John, but others treated him as he was, because people, including John himself, were not yet aware of the true extent of his powers. Janie, who had gotten back her lover that she had been mourning this entire time, felt that everything had changed around them, but their relationship continued. She gave him a golden ring for Christmas the next year, and John was impressed by its molecular composition. Janie said that she was anxious and worried that his feelings for her would change, though he was aware that it would, John calmed her by pledging to love her forever. The following year, the government started the process of turning him into a costumed adventurer, giving him a suit and cape, and giving their adversaries a moniker that evoked the Manhattan Project. 
Dr. Manhattan decided to mark the hydrogen atom on his forehead because he disliked the relationship with the atomic sign, thus creating the powerful Dr. Manhattan as he is seen henceforth. Dr. Manhattan was somewhat modeled after Captain Adam from DC Comics who was encircled by the nuclear threat in Moore's initial plan. The author discovered that Manhattan was a magnificent superhero, allowing him to accomplish more than he ever could with Captain Adam. When creating Dr. Manhattan, Moore tried to dive deep into nuclear physics and quantum mechanics. The author thought that a person living in a quantum cosmos would not view time in a linear fashion, which would affect how he would view human affairs. In order to avoid making Dr. Manhattan cold and emotionless like Sprock from Star Trek, Moore also intended him to have human behaviors, while yet moving away from them and humanity as a whole. Given that it mimics skin tone but has a distinct hue, Gibbons utilized the blue skin motif for Dr. Manhattan after creating the blue character Rogue Trooper. Moore used the shade in the narrative, and Gibbons remarked that Manhattan stood out from the rest of the comic's color scheme. His Role in the Watchmen Movie The superhero movie Watchmen from 2009 is based on the David Gibbons and Alan Moore co-created 1986-1987 DC Comics limited series of the same name. Featuring an ensemble cast that includes Malin Kerman, Billy Crudup, Matthew Good, Carla Gugino, Jackie Earl Haley, Jeffrey Dean Morgan, and Patrick Wilson, the film is directed by Zack Snyder from a screenplay by David Hayter and Alec T. The movie is a dark and dystopian reinterpretation of the superhero genre and is set in an alternative timeline in 1985 at the height of the Cold War. A group of mostly retired American superheroes uncovers the murder of one of their own before discovering a complex and deadly conspiracy while the complicated nature of the situation challenges their moral boundaries. The movie revolves around groups of costumed crime fighters with powers to alter significant events. One group is known as the Minutemen, which was founded in an alternate version of the United States starting in 1939 during the waning interwar period. The Watchmen, another group of heroes, emerged throughout the 1960s Vietnam War era until the mid-1980s Cold War. Their existence has a significant impact on global events. In comes Dr. Manhattan, the only person in the Watchmen group with actual superpowers who serves the US government and is essentially omnipotent. He is a scientist who was involved in an accident in 1959 that gave him superhuman abilities. In the flashback moments where Osterman appears as a human, Crudup is replaced by a motion-captured computer-generated version of himself. Crudup played alongside his co-stars during filming while donning a white costume adorned with blue LEDs so that he would emit an otherworldly radiance in the same way that the computer-generated Manhattan does in the film. Greg Plitt, a fitness model and actor, served as the inspiration for his physique. The team then Frankensteined Crudup's head onto Greg Plitt's torso by 3D mapping it. Crudup's voice was not electronically altered for Manhattan by Snyder, who justified the decision by stating that the character would try to put everyone at ease as much as he could, hence having a robotic voice that would probably seem off-putting would hinder his role in that regard. The part was also extended to Keanu Reeves. Although Reeves expressed interest in the role, he ultimately declined. As far as Dr. Manhattan's role in the movie goes, in order to win the Vietnam War and obtain a tactical advantage over the Soviet Union, which by 1985 was threatening nuclear war, the United States administration made use of his newly acquired skills. In a brilliant scene, he appears in a marshy and rough terrain of the Vietnamese battleground, shining like a god descending on Earth. He vaporizes and destroys all rebels and is able to bring the war to a close in a terribly easy manner. The comedian is another member of the Watchmen who often was sent on these missions along with Dr. Manhattan, accompanying him to Vietnam and also playing a crucial role in the assassination of John F. Kennedy, making sure Nixon won a third term. The Keen Act, which outlaws all costumed adventuring and vigilantism, was then approved in 1977 as anti-vigilante sentiment spread across the country and coincided with a general police strike. 
Now this is not tough to imagine because of the sheer power these heroes wielded. After this act is forced, Dr. Manhattan and the comedian become government agents. Rorschach continues to function outside of the law and the majority of heroes such as Daniel Dreyberg who was Night Owl 2 and Laurie Jupiter who was Silt Spectre 2 retire. After this, when Rorschach looked into the death of Edward Blake in 1985, he found that Blake was the comedian. He cautions his former teammates after theorizing that someone is killing off costumed heroes. Rorschach is ignored by Dr. Manhattan. Dreyberg is dubious, and rich vigilante Adrian Veet downplays Rorschach's concerns. However, Veet surviving an attempted murder confirms Rorschach's suspicions, and Rorschach finds himself being accused of killing erstwhile villain Moloch and sent to prison. In the meanwhile, a reporter claims during a live interview that Dr. Manhattan is to blame for the cancer of many of his close friends. As a result of this revelation, Dr. Manhattan, who was slowly losing his humanity but is by no means a villain, exiled his own self to Mars. In fact, he seemed happier living all alone on Mars than he was in the land of the living. However, by banishing himself to Mars, he invites horrible consequences. Dr. Manhattan's actions gives the Soviet Union the green light to invade Afghanistan. Afghanistan. Thus, on the brink of nuclear war and complete global annihilation, Dr. Manhattan is nowhere to be found. This is a major problem because due to the insane extent of his power, he was probably the only person who would be able to vaporize nuclear warheads en route their destinations if the need ever arose. And it seemed like the time was ripe for such a scenario. However, since Dr. Manhattan had slowly been losing his humanity ever since he turned into a godlike being, he did not feel the need to come and help or even intervene in the situation. While sitting on Mars, he contemplated the purpose of humanity and whether or not it was worthwhile to save them. Confused, he transferred Laurie to Mars and discussed with her whether he ought to attempt to prevent the extinction of the human race. He accompanied her back to Earth after she persuaded him to lend a hand, but they arrived too late. As they were arguing, Ozymandias set off the energy reactors that he helped Manhattan build which exploded and completely destroyed all of Earth's main cities. Manhattan first engaged Ozymandias in combat, but later it was revealed to Dr. Manhattan that this devastation and the nuclear fallout allowed the US and USSR to unite against Manhattan, their shared adversary, and avert World War III. He thus opted to leave Earth and pursue other opportunities after agreeing to maintain Ozymandias' secret, bringing his run as a member of the Watchmen on Earth to a close, at least for the time being. In the movie, since Dr. Manhattan was impacted by one of those customary secret experiments gone awry, he was now shown to be trapped in a towering, strong, nude blue body. The fact that he might exist at a quantum level, where particles appear to be exempt from the traditional constraints of space and time, is more important than the specifics. Don't worry if it seems unlikely that quantum components could combine to form a real physical body. After all, quantum particles make up everything. We don't know a lot about them, especially what makes up Dr. Manhattan. However, what we do know is that he is a quantum man in a room full of masked superhumans, making him much more powerful than any of them could ever dream of being. In fact, after Jonathan turns into Dr. Manhattan, he is no longer human, and he doesn't pretend to be either. He becomes a celestial being, preferring to live a slow life where he could think about things and watch the universe at work, rather than get himself involved in any event. This is also because he developed a deterministic mindset, considering that everything that happened, every event that took place in the universe, was all meant to be part of some larger plan. Dr. Manhattan is also logically removed from the fate of our tiny planet, given that he exists outside of time and space. However, it's possible that he still holds on to some old feelings. The movie is a brilliant portrayal of Dr. Manhattan and actor Billy Crudup brings a moving solemn aura to an otherwise incredulous blue rip giant. The problems and quandaries that he has are unique to him and his character due to his special nature as a quantum being. We see him as neither a hero nor a villain in this movie, but as simply a man who had been ripped apart and made into a god dealing with the consequences of it.
The TV series also did justice to the character. The 1986 DC comic series of the same name, created by Alan Moore and Dave Gibbons, served as the inspiration for the American superhero drama limited series Watchmen. Damon Lindelof, who also served as an executive producer and writer, developed the TV show for HBO. The television show was compared to a remix of the original comic book series by Lindelof. He preferred to establish new people and conflicts that produced a fresh tale within the Watchmen continuity as opposed to producing a reboot, even though the series is essentially a sequel that takes place 34 years after the happenings of the comics within the same parallel reality. The show is set in the year 2019 in Tulsa, Oklahoma. Here, the 7th Cavalry is a white supremacist organization that pursues a violent war against minorities and the police in order to demand specific reparations for racial injustice victims. It was inspired by Rorschach's words and masked appearance. The homes of 40 Tulsa Police Department officers were targeted by the cavalry on Christmas Eve 2016 during a situation that became known as the White Knight. Only two of the survivors, Detective Angela Abar and Police Chief Judd Crawford, continued to work for the department. Laws requiring police to conceal their occupation and shield their identities by donning masks while on the job, including permitting custom police personnel, were passed as the police force was reconstructed. Angela Abar finds herself at the center of two rival schemes to capture Dr. Manhattan, who has been collaborating with Hooded Justice, the original masked hero and the survivor of the Tulsa Massacre, as Crawford's police force tries to put a stop to the 7th Cavalry. The blockbuster HBO adaptation of the classic graphic novel Watchmen revealed its most absurd twist yet in a season already jam-packed with mind-bending turns and unexpected visuals. The episode A God Walks into a bar, revealed that Dr. Manhattan, the strong, blue-skinned man who was thought to be residing on Mars, was actually Cal Abar, played by Yahya Abdul-Mateen II, the calm, supportive husband of the main character, Angela Abar. The most fascinating and enigmatic of the original Watchmen characters, Dr. Manhattan, was a brilliant nuclear physicist who had been genetically altered into a godlike figure as a result of a lab accident. He had been mentioned multiple times throughout the series and finally made an appearance in this episode. The episode showed, through a structurally risky series of flashbacks, how Dr. Manhattan fell in love with Angela after first meeting her in Vietnam. He eventually became so engrossed in love that he gave up his otherworldly identity, erased his memories, and assumed a dead man's body. He has primarily watched from the sidelines as Cal. However, Angela, aka Customed Vigilante Sister Knight, is forced to return Cal to his blue, luminous state when she learns of a nasty bunch of white supremacists planning to capture Dr. Manhattan. This propels Dr. Manhattan into the center of the conflict and, by extension, the entire series itself. Interestingly, at the time of the audition, Yahya Abdul-Mateen II himself did not know that he would be taking on the legendary role of Dr. Manhattan. He had been only told that the role of Cal Abar, a mere side character in the first half of the series, would be worth it for him. He took a leap of faith and accepted the role and it was only around the second and the third episode that he was told that Cal was really the quantum man Dr. Manhattan. The series brought the blue god to life but showed him in a slightly different way. This time around, the god was in love. The silence that characterizes Dr. Manhattan has persisted up until the episode A God Walks Into a Bar. Since leaving for Europa, he hasn't commented on current events and he ignores Gene Smart's calls from other planets. However, Dr. Manhattan's voice dominates this episode as he sincerely participates in Angela's questioning in the Saigon Bar. The majority of the viewer's understanding of Manhattan throughout the episode is through his voice before the camera reveals his face. Abdul Mateen had to create unique body language for each scene in the show to identify Dr. Manhattan from Cal while staying faithful to the comic book version of the character. Additionally, Castle, Lindelof, and Abdul Mateen collaborated with special effects makeup artist Greg Nicotero to screen test several body paint hues for Dr. Manhattan in the film. It takes a blue man group to raise a blue man. Abdul Mateen spent three hours shaving his head and wearing a bald helmet before putting on the makeup. All of this resulted in the brilliant on-screen portrayal of Dr. Manhattan that sent fans into a frenzy. 
Rave reviews streamed in post this episode and it is easy to see why. The revelation that Lady True, not the 7th Cavalry as previously assumed, was behind the conspiracy to kidnap and assassinate Dr. Manhattan was one of the biggest twists of the Watchmen finale. Trio was the brains behind it all, even though other cavalry members did have their own motivations for wanting to absorb Manhattan's abilities. She deliberately allows some of the cavalry tools to be stolen so that they would be the ones to go through the bother of kidnapping and imprisoning Dr. Manhattan. At the conclusion of A God Walks Into a Bar, members of the cavalry, including Senator Keane, grabbed Manhattan and transferred him to a massive lithium cage. Excited with their catch, they were ready to give Keane Manhattan's powers. However, things did not go as planned. True permitted them to take some of her tools, but she didn't instruct them on how to use them. So when Keen tried to transfer the powers, he was instantaneously liquefied, leaving the surviving cavalry members in True's care. She vaporized them after reading the white supremacists a passionate letter from Will Reeves. Unfortunately for Angela, Trio had Dr. Manhattan next on her list of people to kill. Manhattan, who had gathered to thwart Trio, teleports Adrian, Agent Blake, and Wade Tillman to Adrian's lab before succumbing to Trio's centrifuge, but not before telling Angela he loves her and reliving all of their past interactions. Thus, at the end of the series, Dr. Manhattan was vaporized. Knowing his powers, he might be floating somewhere in the multiverse and trying to assemble himself back together again. But a second season of Watchmen is unlikely, so we probably won't be seeing him in the same continuity again. Exploring the incredible powers of Dr. Manhattan Dr. Manhattan has a large number of incredibly diverse powers. It is implied that John Osterman is the only human on the globe who possesses true superpowers. He is demonstrated to be utterly strong and impervious to all injury. Even when his body is destroyed, he can quickly reassemble it. This is the very first skill he learned. Osterman is completely aware of, has perfect control over, and is able to see even Neutrinos. He is omnikinetic as well. He is immortal and does not require oxygen, drink, food, or sleep. Dan Draber gave the ability to transport oneself and others over indefinite distances the moniker Manhattan Transfer. He sees the past, present, and future all at once as a result of his understanding of time. Given that you see the past and future simultaneously, I can only see my own past. Events he can see happen so quickly and in such minute detail that they almost seem to have never happened. In addition to being able to move objects without physically touching them, telekinesis, altering his size, projecting destructive energy, disintegrating people, creating force fields, transmuting, creating and destroying matter, and according to Osterman, creating life. He can also phase any part of his body through solid objects without harming them. Osterman has also stepped on the surface of the sun. Did you really think it would kill me? I have walked across the surface of the sun. It is mentioned at one point that in case of a nuclear war, he would be able to decimate substantial portions of Russia while also taking out Soviet nuclear weapons. Osterman's apparent weakness is disinterest. His astounding omnipotence is contrasted with his growing detachment, and in some ways, boundless power has come at the expense of complete abdication of duty. He doesn't age biologically, but his character has evolved through time as a result of a slow loss of humanity. His activities frequently appear to be regulated by a strict utilitarian code of ethics, according to which the right path of action must be the one that helps everyone the most. He holds a deterministic views of events and makes an effort to exercise choice. Nearly all human issues seem meaningless and lacking in clear significance from his drastically altered perspective. He did nothing to stop the murder of the Vietnamese woman, even though she was pregnant. You know what? You watched me. You could have turned the gun into steam, the bullets into mercury, the, the bottle into goddamn snowflakes, but you didn't, did you? Or the death of President John F. Kennedy, despite the fact that he could see into the future. Despite having superpowers, it is ironic that Manhattan's life was controlled by others. His father forced him into a career. Slater initiated their relationship and the majority of his actions were in obedience to the Pentagon and the government, as if Dr. Manhattan didn't care what he was doing. 
He made decisions purely out of need because he could see the past, present and future all at once. It is claimed that John is aware of and experiencing every instance of his life at once after undergoing his change because he starts to experience time in a non-linear quantum way. Although John lacks omniscience and still relies on his intellect and sensory experience to draw conclusions, his sensory data range is what had suddenly expanded in direct proportion to the decline in his emotional capabilities. He frequently draws inferences from this that are far different from those available to regular people. However, he exhibits strong emotion multiple times during Watchmen. Due to a huge, impenetrable perpetual gap between John and the rest of humanity, it is less about his seeming lack of emotion and more about drastically shifted priorities. The fact that Manhattan is essentially a god means that his experiences with and responses to the human environment and even reality itself cannot be matched to or contained within the human condition and psychology despite the fact that schizoid personality disorder is characterized by reclusiveness and voluntary withdrawal from socializing to the detriment of personal relationships. As far as his weakness goes, Viet was right to expect tachyons. A strong burst of them can only slightly hinder his capacity to predict the future. Nonetheless, his telekinetic abilities were untouched. Dr. Manhattan speculated that an EM pulse might produce such static that obscures the future, albeit it was never observed in practice, suggesting a potential flaw that could hinder him. He is definitely one of the most fascinating characters in the Watchmen series and in the DC Universe as a whole. The only problem that we can see the character encountering is becoming so powerful that he is no longer fun to watch or root for. While DC definitely always does a great job when it comes to creating compelling and complex characters, with Dr. Manhattan, they tread a fine line between him being godlike and him becoming god. After all, no one likes someone who doesn't have any weakness at all. What do you think about Dr. Manhattan? Is he the strongest being in the DC universe? Tell us in the comment section below. And if you liked our content, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to us if you haven't already. Have a good one and be safe. Thanks, everyone.